we are past November 12th, obviously, which was the date the RFP suggested is how that would be the contract award date. Uh, it's apparent that this is not going to make it any time here immediately uh, in the near term. Uh, and every indication informally uh, suggested by the Defense Department is it'll be after the new year before we see the contract award. And, and that, again, not overly surprising. Uh, not because of any particular set of issues or incidents or, or facts, but because they're going through an incredibly diligent process of trying to adhere to each step to assure that they do this in a way that avoids a protest. And to be completely open and transparent with everybody involved and lay it all out and as a consequence to avoid anything that could possibly rise to a, a, a sustainable protest in this case. So uh, each step along the way has been delayed a little bit uh, in the last several months, not because of foot dragging or anchor dragging because they didn't want to get there. It's been more a case that they were really trying to, trying to follow the, the, the steps along the way. And I must tell you, it is, in my experience, uh, the most above board, fair, and open competitive process I've ever had any affiliation with. It is really quite extraordinary to see that the length to which the department's gone want to make sure that this is even handed across in terms of how they treat this. Uh, that said, um, the incident that was reported here Friday would suggest us how, okay, you got an issue now having released uh, proprietary data to both uh, contractors uh, you know, on behalf of the Air Force. <coughs> You know, in terms of the forensics of how that happened, you got to talk to the Air Force. I don't know. And I don't think anybody else in our company or the competitors have any insight into that either. So anybody who is offering a, a view and assessment of that, uh, and inevitably I would just su suggest to you they're offering their opinion, not facts. Because the only folks who have the facts on this is the Department of Defense, and the Air Force in particular. Um, so I won't, you know, I won't offer an opinion in terms of what the, the, uh, the engagement is there. And everything I've seen to date, including that incident, because they responded to it promptly as soon as it was reported to them that this was what had been released. It was clear it was an inadvertent release. All the information was recalled, and they asked for everything that would go with that uh, to validate that uh, inspection. So they're doing this by the book. I mean, just, if, if you follow the process of how such incidents are handled by reading the process that's published to everybody, that this is what you do in the event of. And they did it exactly that way, and so did we. And uh, from what I gather, from what the, the uh, Defense Department uh, released on Friday in response to this particular uh, incident, uh, inquiry about it, is that they did the same to the competitors, or the competitors did the same as well. So you know, it's, it's going to move along. And how that gets treated and what the ultimate import of that is, we'll stay tuned. We'll, we'll watch and see what the, the, uh, the response is from the Defense Department and what their assessment is uh, relative to um, that view. But they have offered the, the assessment early that it is not a compromising event in their opinion. You know, We'll see whether that sustains itself. And again, everything to date would suggest an absolute strict adherence to um, process integrity in terms of working this, you know, very above board, very transparent. So we have no objection, no complaint to the manner by which the Defense Department has treated any matter or any element of this evaluation. Uh, so that's going to continue, and I, you know, benefit of the doubt will always be extended by virtue of the the past performance record that they've demonstrated and they're going through this. Um, now what has happened, and it is noteworthy in and of itself, and I think many of you have picked this up, is they've spent the last few months issuing since we submitted our proposals in July. And it was right after that I went on this extended summer vacation to <laughs> turn out to be a lot longer than I thought it would be. Um, it was during that period of time that they issued a series of evaluation notices to both of us, to both our competitor and us, about the content of our uh, individual uh, proposals. 
and we've answered those. It, it numbers in the hundreds. There was another pile that came in just the other day, I guess you know, like last week, we will be responding to as well. So you know, this, this process isn't looking like it's going to shut down anytime soon. We want to really you know, go through all the wickets of it, understand what's in the proposals. We've responded to that. And as a result, they're, they're refining their assessment of both proposals, I imagine, uh, on the basis of what they're learning from the inquiries that they're making. So all that's part of the process, how it all works. And the next step from there is they may or may not, uh, depending on how they elect to to follow through and, and the, the, the procedures, is go through a final price review assessment. And then they ask for um, uh, revisions from both competitors uh, to the extent we want to do so. Uh, in the time ahead. And when that's going to occur, I don't know. Ask the Air Force. That's, they're, they're more tuned on that question than uh, anybody else would be. Anybody else would get an opinion on it. And sometime thereafter, there will be a uh, termination and that contract award will be announced. And we'll respond based on that event. Uh, that, that said, I'm as optimistic today as I was before I left <laughs> in August. Uh, that we've got a winning proposal. We've put forward our best effort on it. It's a aircraft that uh, now are there are nine different aircraft either in production or flight test uh, for five different you know, nations. Uh, the performance characteristics uh, on those aircraft is very very close to that which we offer to the Air Force. I mean, I, I, uh, to give you just as a rule of thumb, it's on the order of magnitude of 90% common with what we've offered to other uh, nations in terms of their the request for the kind of characteristics they're looking for. And there's uh, several unique factors that the Air Force has asked for, but none of which are so unique as to make it look like an entirely different airplane. Okay? Um, we've passed all the, the requisite um, qualification tests. Uh, for this aircraft to perform, to do what it's supposed to do, which is to pass fuel at range and <laughs> in volume, and it's doing all those things. Uh, and the first of deliveries here to the Australians should be happening in a matter of you know, days, weeks at most, uh, this calendar year. Uh, so they're, they're going through all the, rather than being fixed to a date, they're waiting for all the pieces to fall in place and all the things that are necessary to fall into place. Uh, for them to accept uh, operational responsibility for the aircraft shortly. Uh, the UK has uh, started flight tests and uh, are, by all public statements, proclamation, very pleased with the performance of the airplane. Now, our competitors, uh, I think, have a, a very impressive um, presentation on what they would like to do and what they'd like to see fly in the event that they have the privilege to build such an airplane on behalf of the people of the United States. And we wish them well in that continuing PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> uh, there's not a lot of mystery that we're using here in our, our responses to the evaluation notices so far. We're telling the Air Force, to the extent there's applicable answer, exactly what the actual performance is on the flight test we have underway for five, or per, or production underway for five sovereign nations. And so we're giving them the information as it's occurring right now, right, that, that, that are actual performance characters. So it's a, um, uh, an opportunity, I think, to be very specific about what it is we can do, and they're making uh, the determination on the basis of what they know are fact about what this airplane can do. <coughs> Um, again, that's, that's pretty much the update on where we are on tanker. Let me touch on a couple of...